And with those winds we were experiencing, it quickly got out of control. You can see what is still burning here this evening. I'm told that it's a lot smaller than what it was earlier tonight. And I actually want to show you where Illinois State Police forced their way into the building this afternoon. I'm going to walk up here. You can see the glass. It's broken on the bottom and janitors are now working to clean this area up. Starting July 1st, when you do this, it's going to cost you more money. This tree that you see here right behind me is the tree that fell on top of that vehicle that did kill that woman. Governor Pritzker campaigned on legalizing marijuana. And when he signs this bill, Illinois will be the 11th state to have legal marijuana. I brought my notebook out here so you can kind of see the ice pellets just kind of bounce off my notebook here. That is what it's doing to cars, to sidewalks, to roads. This? is what Vogler Ford is dealing with tonight. More than 20 vehicles on their lot have slashed tires. They have to set their belongings down to be checked. Then they have to walk through the metal detector and be cleared before they head to their first class. Actually, I just got done asking these two, Mr. and Mrs. Kloss I'm hanging out with. I just asked them if the News 3 team is on the naughty or nice list. But I want to start off by showing you these. These are some of the shingles from the roof of the county courthouse here in Franklin County that have been kind of falling off over the years. This is the basement of the Franklin County Courthouse, and you can see some of the walls are deteriorating. So far this year, they've had 204 fires. Last year total, they had 189. Now the best part about this type of snow is it makes great <laughs> snowballs and snowmen. Great news for the kids. Temperature, I just checked with our meteorologist, Jim Razor. He told me it's about 32 degrees here for this season. It's called the birthday village, but they actually want to tell you all something at home. So guys, on the count of three, can I get a let's go miners? One, two, three. Let's go miners! Good evening. More than 100 people came out to honor the life of SIUC Chancellor's Carlo Montemagno. He would tell. And to other stories making news now, President Donald Trump held a Make America Great Again rally for his supporters tonight ahead of next month's elections. President Trump was in Lebanon, Ohio, and new at 10 tonight, the West Frankfurt Mall is like most malls, struggling for shoppers now that Amazon and other online sites have taken businesses away from the retail brick and mortar stores. Good evening. Smoke covered a neighborhood this afternoon in Mount Vernon after a house caught fire. Take a look at this picture that was sent in by a viewer. And Carterville Police need your help gathering information on damage in Cannon Memorial Park. Employees found the cannon pictured here damaged on Thursday. News 3's Emily Manley gives us a look at the struggles residents are facing. It's just part of living along the river. For months, residents of McClure have been fighting water from flooding their homes and businesses. It's seep water. Your basement's flood. If you've got a basement in McClure, you should have water in it. The town of 300 people lined with sandbags. I mean, this is, this is hard work. It's hot and they're heavy. <laughs> you're all wet and you're tired from three or four or five days a month of doing it. And inside these homes, residents are doing their best to keep things dry. You put hot water heaters up, you put stuff up on blocks. Roads leading in and out of the town are underwater, making it nearly impossible for those to come and go. If you look on this left side, there are a few. States. I think Michael staked it. So you can see the where the edge of the road is right there. And making it hard for those to go to church. All right, let's go have church. Water level so high, services had to be moved to another town. We're gonna have church. We're gonna give God his time and then we're gonna come back and Go back to work. And even if floodwaters aren't affecting your home, you help your neighbors who are affected. If that's the way it's got to be, if I got to tear up my truck or whatever, do it. That's just what you got to do. Reporting in McClure, Emily Manley, News 3. An EF2 tornado ripped through parts of McCracken County, Kentucky, just before 9.30 Thursday morning. How blessed that we've been through this. This could have been a very, very high uh, fatality rate. The sheriff says he believes it's truly an act of God. No one had major injuries. There's only uh, one answer to that. I believe the almighty hand of God protected our community. 
This is what one sheriff's deputy car looked like after it faced major winds and debris of the tornado. Sheriff Carter says the deputy was not injured. The driver of another car sustained minor injuries when his car became wrapped up in this grain bin. That's the first I've ever seen a motor vehicle become entangled in a, in a grain bin. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Dennis Sanders was at work with eight other employees when the tornado tore through the Wilbert business. Any other day, we knew there were storms coming. I watched the first storm go by and move to the northeast and thought we were kind of safe and we were going to be okay. Sanders said the next thing he knew, the garage door blew out. A few minutes later, everything calmed down and, and half our building is gone in the back. So that's. Wilbert Services manufactures concrete burial vaults. They have another location in Heron. And I was maybe expecting a door down or some blocks down or something like that. I had no idea that the whole back of the building would be gone. Sanders says the building is 50 years old and just couldn't sustain the winds of an EF2 tornado. Have you ever been through a tornado? Before? Never, never. This first time. Hopefully the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I will say that he had a very good sense of humor for what he dealt with today. Right here, back on Highway 62 in Paducah, crews will continue to work throughout the night to try to restore power, put up power lines, and of course, try to keep these people safe here in this area. As for the business itself, when I was speaking with Dennis, Dennis tells me that they do have three funerals tomorrow that they have to attend to. And although their building is ruined, they will be at all three funeral arrangements doing the work that they are known to do. Reporting live in Paducah this evening, Emily Manley, News 3. As far as the rides went, it was a disaster. A homecoming that was supposed to raise money for Ava's volunteer fire department, ruined. It was heartbreaking to us, to the fire department. Organizer of the Ava homecoming, Kristen Anderson, says an amusement ride company out of Indiana is to blame. There was kids leaving crying because they didn't get to ride rides. Back in January, Kristen signed a contract with Steel Horse Midway Attractions. Within the contract, the company agreed to bring rides, games, and a food truck. He was supposed to bring 10 rides. We were told by him Saturday night that he doesn't even own 10 rides, he only owns nine. Anderson said they paid a $1,500 deposit when they signed the contract. Then they paid half of the $12,000 bill once he showed up. He still owes us $4,000 back. Rides were supposed to be operating by the time the homecoming started Thursday night. Anderson says none of the rides were assembled by the deadline the company had agreed to and even made the state inspector wait. By Friday night, some of the rides were up and running, but not for long. He got that one up and running and then a different one broke down. Nine-year-old Clarissa Hall says she was disappointed with the rides and even nervous about riding them. It was a little sketchy. You would see the guy moving the thing to make it go on and off and nothing would happen with the ride. After she would spend time waiting in line, she wouldn't be able to enjoy the rides. Every single time I go in line for another ride, it would break down. In this field behind me is where those amusement rides were during the homecoming. But after the homecoming, the city still had to deal with that company. The city says that the company moved their ride to the community center parking lot. They say that those rides were too heavy to be parked on this parking lot and created these holes. They're now covered up, but the city says that this created more cost to their loss. The mayor had to get involved. They, they broke through the asphalt on our parking lot. They were too heavy. Ava Homecoming doesn't make anyone pay to ride the rides. They started that idea five years ago, and because of the fair cost, people come from all over to enjoy the festival. He really broke a lot of children's hearts, kids and families that come here that can't afford to pay what it usually costs to ride carnival rides.